Hi, um, my name is Carissa Floyd of Plotty's House in New Braunfels, Texas. Um, it's kind of like right in between Austin and San Antonio. Uh, prior to that, I owned the Plotty's Underground, which was a small group performer studio in North Shore Chicago area, um, Lake Forest. If anyone's from the area, you'll know it. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm mom, wife, I'm an eight year old. I have a really fluffy dog that jewels everywhere. Um, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> nice. Keep it simple. Yeah. So, so you own the studio in Chicago, and now you own a studio in, in Texas. That, that's basically yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. Um, so that was like I had. We were in like Forest. Um, I had a small group of performer studios, like six performers. Um, by the, I had that a little over two years, maybe three if you count like half of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I had finally built it up to like where I. It was like me doing everything and then I couldn't find instructors. And so then I brought in a training program and then I had people take the training program and then I mentored them because I realized there was huge gaps in training. <laughs> and then right when I had like my team, COVID hit, right? Um, and I just really couldn't like reopen in the way I was set up um, yeah. with those restrictions and just keeping everybody safe you know, wasn't possible in that way. So. Um, I got stuck in Texas um, March 13th, 2020. We were supposed to be here three days. And then we were, had no, everything shut down and we didn't know what was going on. So we were like, let's stay another week. Also in Chicago, it was like 30 degrees and here we can be like on the river. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> the warm weather exactly. pulled you in. Yes, and so um, we ended up staying in Texas for like two and a half months and then fell in love with it. So we went back up June, 2020, sold everything. I sold all my, everything except for one of everything. Um, mm -hmm. Back down in July, 2020. Wow. So then I kind of reopened as a private studio, um, used that as a kind of opportunity to rebrand. Um, yeah. Throughout the time, I learned a lot about like how I want to show up as an instructor versus mm -hmm. the business I want to run and how I can like meld those things. Um, yes. I, and so honestly, it's, it's been, um, while challenging and like, I miss my people and I miss my team and I miss like all that. Right. Um, mm. that opportunity, honestly is what I miss the most. Um, it's been an amazing opportunity to kind of restart with a lot of intentionality. Um, like Friday's off. <laughs> you know? Like Friday's off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at. That's no, that's like, those are some courageous steps. Yeah, maybe. It, it is. I don't know, like for you in the chat, like how you think about that, but I think that's courageous. I mean, Chicago to Texas, like, I mean, I don't know how rooted you are in terms of family and friends and, and networks in either of those spots, but still, I, you know, for me to just say I'm moving to Vancouver, that's like, that takes some work, right? Like yeah. a lot of contemplation. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, we also have moved a lot. Um, so I don't know. I think that was, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever had times in your life when you're just like, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that like, this is the thing. Uh, mm -hmm. We've definitely had like a few of those, uh, like me individually, for sure. Um, <laughs> moving to Texas is definitely crazy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I appreciate it. Um, probably because we've moved often and I don't know. We've just had a lot of adventure. And I think saying yes to those moments when they happen, like I've never regretted that. It's been stressful yeah. times, but I've never mm -hmm. regretted being like, oh, I'm like listening to that gut feeling. I've only ever regretted not listening to my gut feeling. If that well, makes yeah, sense. That, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And that's like, that is totally, I feel like I'm talking to my wife right now because where I say uncertainty, she says adventure. Ah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good... It's, it's so helpful to have a partner that can see things from a different perspective like that. Um, mm -hmm. Like my husband has this view that like things will just always work out. Um, I've never grown up feeling that way. And, but being able to like meld our worldviews and see where the other comes from has helped us. Like, I think that has helped me say yes to those moments even oh, more. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. I that things work out you know what i mean like it's absolutely awesome yeah it's... that no doubt like i feel like that's anyone who looks at me is like wow you're doing that that's so awesome that's so courageous i'm like that's a learned skill okay yeah. like that's I'm not, right or and right. if or if i am wired like that much like our people that would come into our space 
it's so deep down there we have to unearth it so i you know what i mean like yes it was probably in me but i had like packed it down with so many excuses and, and lived experiences yes that was probably more accurate than saying it wasn't in me um in retrospect but like you know what i mean like it's yeah. we gotta people bring that out of us we do that for our people where we unearth those things that that were already there so we're not like you said we're not giving them something that they didn't already have yes exactly totally yeah yeah um yeah noam had said that as well the other day so that that, that so that's kind of becoming a reoccurring theme that sense of like not giving people something that they didn't already have like we're not giving them something new yeah no, no, not at all. I think that also kind of goes with, I don't know, like the idea of like somebody else being anybody's guru, right? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No needs a, I see this a lot, like, and I'm sure other people in the fitness realm see it too. It's like, people are searching for like an answer for the thing, for the diet that will change their life, for the fitness thing, you know, they're searching for an answer outside of themselves. And what's really awesome is when, we can offer the perspective of like maybe starting to think about thinking about like the answers already in you, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's really amazing. You know, I don't know. It, no, it is. It is. It is. And I think that there's just two parts to that. Like me, yeah. like when my background is in counseling. So there's a sense of understanding that when someone comes into a counseling setting, I'm not supposed to give you answers. I'm supposed to ask you questions which spark you to, to search for the answer within you. That's like counseling 101. The contrast to that though is as we're marketing our businesses, what is your niche? What is your area of expertise? Who is yeah. your target market? Who is your ideal client I, avatar? But so much. <laughs> but I guess it's good. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, but I hate it. <laughs> Because there's not like, like, okay, so I know my person, right? She's 55. She's maybe going through like postmenopausal, um, mm-hmm. gained like maybe the last five, 10 pounds recently. She remembers a time when she was like, did something that she loved that was active, whether it was a sport or at one point she was an athlete or she just loved to dance or loved to play tennis. Um, And then she tried something really high intensity recently to try to just like go back to that. Right. And then it didn't work out. And then maybe she got injured or just like injured mentally. Right. Like, or emotionally that like, she can't be what she wants to be. And then finally is like, I don't know how to take care of my body. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I just, I'll try, like Pilates is like a Hail Mary, right? Yes. Um, and then that's where they, I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know, I am Come here to me. <laughs> do this. Um, but it's so hard because I don't feel like my niche or like my cell, right, is like any kind of a sexy product or result. Like there's no... Mm. There's no, um, you're going to have a six pack in six weeks. There's, there's no like tangible, like earlier we're saying like, you know, even in weights, it's easier. Like you can track, you can be like last week I lifted five pounds and this week I I lifted 12 and like that you can, you can see that. And you know, I don't do like static postural analysis to like have a, I don't do before and after photos. I don't like film their session. Um, so then what is the tangible thing? And, and I think it is giving them pauses in their session to find like those moments of, ah, like those aha, yes. those moments of like, oh, I can feel this. Oh, I can change the experience I'm having in and with my body. Like I can change, yes. I can just do, my shoulder feels weird. I can change it, <laughs> you know, like yes. Yes. That, 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 and to me that happens with questions and leaving a lot of space. Mm-hmm. And- find it and then they can find that same thing in CrossFit. They can find that same feeling again when they go on a run. They can find it when they're in the car and they turn weird and like throw their bottle back to their kid or you know something like yes. And so that's kind of that's what I like to give people. Um that's that's what I like to offer. And uh, but I don't yes. I get stuck admittedly in the marketing of that because like how do you what, how do you make that sound sexy? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's I love that. I mean, that's that's exactly it. But what you said there is, 
that whole principle of enhancing their life. We do Pilates to make them better at life, not to be better at Pilates. Like there's no Pilates Olympics. I mean, right. 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 So, um, so yeah, no, I hear you on that, and, yeah. but that, but that, I guess you could just, you could distill that. Like you could, you could, you could, you can bottle that yeah. in terms of making it smaller, but, but what you said there would be enough to make, you know, everyone at the table last night be like, I'm, I need some of that. Mm, you know, I yeah. have hurt my shoulder when I reach back and grab something from the back seat, or I have done something that used to be easy five weeks ago and, and I just treat my back and I don't know how to fix it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had people do, I think that that's those times when people do that with me where they're like, uh, we've been working together for a while. I did this on the weekend, and I remember to just do a couple wall roll downs, and my back felt better. I'm like, that's what we've been training like, for. Awesome! Yes, yeah. I was like, and then my husband's back was feeling bad, and I was like, oh my gosh, you just need to do this. And she's like, and I put him through just two things, and then he felt better. And I'm like, yes, go, go, spread the things, you know. <laughs> You're a Pilates instructor. You just go, you know amazing like ah, you sound like an evangelist I, right? <laughs> <laughs> my little circles <laughs> yes um anyways <laughs> yeah that's yeah so, mark well, is not my strong point but um but. or is it though <laughs> like, uh, i don't know uh in the chat thumbs up for that marketing uh pitch there um <laughs> So Chris is in that. Okay. So then this is the question you're walking down the street and someone says, what do you do? Uh, teach Pilates, which I feel like is such a loaded. <laughs> <laughs> How easy did you just walk into that? Yes. That is a totally loaded thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then it's the whole, and we know where this goes. Is that like yoga? Ah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Depends how much time you have. Right. right. Yeah, I was watching a, a video with him. Um, it was a new Myberg and um, oh my god, Trey. I forgot his last name. But there's the the video was like as Pilates called, and she starts off um, by saying like, you know, you're in the back of a taxi, and someone says, "Oh, what do you do?" And you're like, "How much time is left in the ride? <laughs> like, I gotta decide. <laughs> if we're gonna go into this. <laughs> like, the longer it goes, the weirder it sounds. And it's just like, yeah, it's yoga. <laughs> you know, like, yeah." Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. guy last night at the table, I was telling him I do Pilates, and he was like, oh, that planking stuff? Yeah, I don't do planks. That planking stuff. I love it. That's oh, great. but wait for it. Wait for it. He's like, the only planking I do is salmon on the barbecue. <laughs> Straight face. <laughs> You're like, you know he saw that on a t-shirt somewhere. I was like, you clearly have used that line before because that was too yeah. smooth. To bring it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everyone has their own perception. And, you know, I'm just like, what do you want it to be? You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. Because, you know, honestly, you said that as a joke, but the reality is we can do that. Yeah. Like, I am good enough that I can make this what you want it to be. What do you need? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 100%. To me, it's like tools to support my body where it is. Um, so yep. if I can show you those tools, cool. Um, is this the only toolbox? No. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, it's funny, you know, like I'm just, I'm, I'm having this realization like last night, I, I'm talking about last night and at the table and stuff, you, you may not understand watching. I was at an awards ceremony for the city of Mississauga. Uh, for the arts, uh, the Mississauga Arts. So it's called the Marty Awards. So it's like their awards where they, they celebrate, you know, top vocalists, top dancers, theater, all these different things. And this area has a theater company that operates out of a, a local theater that's in my, my area, my city, my, my ward. Um, so I was able to go to this. It was like a like super dress up, fancy, fancy event. So at the table were all these theater people. So the conversation was... You know, like they're all, everyone's a theater and then the fitness guy in the corner, right? <laughs> so, so it's, it's different than what I do here where we're talking shop and we could dive deep in it. I'm with people who um, 
do work out at home, work out TV, try plies once, don't like plies, don't want to think planking is for salmon on the barbecue, right? Yes. So <laughs> it's it's different. So like, so these are real top questions. When I ask you, when someone asks you, what do you do? How do you articulate it? How do you articulate what Pilates is? And then how do you, like, I, I said it to him last night. I was like, yeah, it is, it can be a hard core stuff. It can be flexibility. It can be postural stuff. It can be injury prevention. It can be performance. It can be like, actually, what do you need? Right. Like, we, can, you know? Yes, absolutely. And that's, that has been, so I switched from groups to privates. Yes. Um, had privates in between group sessions and stuff. Um, but that has been one of the most like rewarding and it's we're going on two years, which I can't believe like mm -hmm. shut down pand you know, all it's just nuts. But, um, but yeah, so two years really of just only private sessions and what being able to do that all the time of like, what do you need today? Like, yes, I'll have a conversation telling me things in their life I'm you know mm -hmm. like, and watching them it like you know yesterday the term embodiment I think was used in yes comments which um I'm still trying to wrap my head around but like and I want to know more um but I think that it's like like I feel like I'm seeing that in people like where they yes I, Pilates has taught me how to be in my body right and mm -hmm. how to, yeah. and I'm starting to see that when I want that so fun is when you can go there with somebody um yes. with somebody to go there and and that's that's kind of like the environment that's i don't know being cultivated right now so it's fun like, I, that's, it's like the like the ethos in your studio itself right like yeah yeah it's just like how are you showing up you know i, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that makes any sense but uh it, but it, it does yeah yeah before i opened my private studio and i wasn't sure i was gonna reopen it all I was like, I, maybe I'm done. Like, maybe this is clean break. We'll just call it. I was really burnt out. A um, mm -hmm. lot of feelings about all of that. And I like, that was my baby. And I loved my studio. But also the relief I felt from not owning it anymore. Was yes. Like, I'm even hesitant to be like, uh, you know, like and I, it, it just was like, it kind of got away from me a little bit because you go through these steps of, and yesterday you talked about like, well, it's not like studio ownership isn't the golden rule or something like that. Like, but the it's gold not, standard. Right, gold standard. Yeah. Um, and I feel like now there's so many more options talked about all the time, but yes. when going through training, right. The path was like, you train, you mentor, maybe you come an instructor trainer and then maybe you own your own studio, right. It's very linear. Yeah. How you yes. get what you do and so I kind of like skipped the instructor trainer part like studio ownership that's the next step and I really had this moment of like oh my gosh like I was doing coaching with um Jenna Zafino I love her and I was a part of the reason I think I was feeling so burnt out is that my teaching style like what I value was not how I set my studio up like I set my studio up to be the thing that I thought I needed to do and then the way that I, yeah, yeah. That. and so all of a sudden mm. I have to nurture and I have to take care of and I need to grow and I have responsibility to people and finances and all this, but like, I want to show up this way and I don't know how to like, unless I completely break it down, how do I bridge that gap? Like, I, I don't right. know. Right? Kind of, thank God it ended. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Absolutely. When I had this moment with her when I, I realized like, all the things I want for people. And, and she was like, how does it feel to be a Sherpa? And I was like, what? And she was like, you're putting like, you know, I'm like, I want them to have this experience and I want them to change their body. And, and like, how do you do that in a group class where people sometimes come in and sometimes don't, or they come a lot and then they don't. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, hey, Chris, you're you're chopping up a little bit. Hold on, let's see. 
Are we back? Uh, it's frozen. Oh no, are we still frozen? Okay. Are we good? Uh, you're back, but it, it's lagging, but you're back. Okay. I'm gonna try not to move it. <laughs> <Is that Yeah. laughs> let's see. I'm gonna also make sure the Wi-Fi is off in here. Okay, let's try that. Is that any better, worse, or the same? Uh, a little bit better. Okay, we'll try that. I'm gonna make sure my Wi-Fi thing's off. I might lose the screen real quick. Okay. Okay. How's that? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's better now. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, sorry. Um, no, it's okay. I, I finally felt permission to show up how I wanted to show up. That did not mesh yes. the studio situation very well. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but, oh. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah. Is what you're saying. Um, yeah. so I sat down and I wrote down like my personal manifesto, right? And then yes. I was like, I might have oh, read that for the record. Okay, okay yeah. Um, yeah. And so I was like, this this could be my this is a studio. It's not at all what I had, but mm -hmm. this is how I want to show. Um, and what I want to invite people into, which is a partnership. And I set that expectation in the beginning now. Um, and I my schedule, I change the way I talk to people on their first session, I change the way I do like intakes, I change like literally everything. I changed the way yes. I I stopped trying to be like the cool hip studio. <laughs> like I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, but like good. Show. that's a release. That's yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. Um and I'm I I end my sessions like I talk like a quarter of the amount. I perform zero percent now you know <laughs> and it is like okay that's that's where i want to be at and people either jive with that or they don't and i'm totally fine with that <laughs> you know? there's, enough people, there's enough people on the planet it's, it's yeah. fine yeah absolutely for sure absolutely so that's the, um that's I, that's awesome like it's just choosing to show up and i'm sure that didn't go well with everybody at the same time <laughs> like <laughs> Because I mean, like that's like people want to keep us in the state that they're most familiar with us being in, which makes it difficult for us to grow and evolve. Because like, where is the old? Da da da. Like you know what I mean? When you try and make make those changes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, hundred um, percent. But it made space, right? Like, I can't we gotta create space. Yeah. Um, it made a lot of space. Like yesterday, I was thinking about this yesterday. I signed off and I was like, probably so awkward, but I remember like going like this, you know, um, but that's how yes. I, sessions. <laughs> and I literally helped. So it was just like natural. I'm like, Oh, I'm on video. Like I do that after before I, <laughs> oh, my. So we I was like, that. <laughs> did, she just, did she just blow me a kiss? And we talked for like five minutes. Specifically like the, the Instagram world. You know? um, yes. But I genuinely, Tell my clients I love them and I do and like that's how I end my sessions and like I have people that like if they never come to Pilates again like we are still gonna have zoom coffee you know like they are part of my life and and vice versa and I love it and I know that not everyone's like available for that um but like I've seen you know Pilates groups or whatever and people are like yeah. oh you know if they start talking then I just tell them we might as well just order pizza, you know, and we're done with this. And what, I'm just like, okay, whatever. Or mm -hmm. then you'll just be left with a friend. I had someone say that. I'm like, I would be totally fine if I was just left with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I feel you on that. Like, honestly, I feel that. I, I'm like, my clients become acquaintances. My acquaintances become friends. My friends become family. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, like, I, I don't know. And, and I understand the need for boundaries and I understand that energetically we're not all available to all give all of us all the time to all our people. Mm -hmm. I totally get that. But also like I value conversation. And so yes. somebody, I feel like it's the fastest way to get insight into someone's perspective. And when someone's yes. going to offer me insight into their perspective, what a gift. And if I can receive that, yes. Yes, I'm about it. Like, 
And so that's kind of where I fall on that, you know? <laughs> if I wasn't, if we just watch this, I'd be pressing that hard button yeah. like, oh, so hard right now. Um, yeah. So requisite Pilates uh, says it's all about re relationships. The five, I remember hearing someone say this, the five secrets to business, I think it was, or to sales, to being successful in business. Relationship, 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 and relationship. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, you know, I work with adults. Like, I'm not here to treat anybody like a kid. I have a kid. I'm happy to parent him. You know, that's, I'm not here to <laughs> right. anybody else. I'm not here to be like, do this. And if you don't, get out. Or we're just ordering pizza because you don't really care. Like, I, I'm just mm. not where I'm at. <laughs> like, right. I, I don't attract the people that want to be talked to like that. Like, I just mm -hmm. don't. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I 100% yeah, I agree with you on that. That's yeah. that's really how I roll as well. Yeah. Like it, it is about building a relationship with people and those connections and, and being vulnerable, being real. But at the same time, as I say, like not bleeding all over them either. Like this is still yeah. your hour. 100%, yes. You yes. know? Um, but yeah, that's that's so good. There's a few comments I want to yeah. circle back to here. Um, earlier... Christopher Ply said, I used to be so rigid as a teacher when I started 19 years ago. In that time, in time, I realized it's about working with the body in front of me. Sounds simple and no, but it took me time. And I think that even that phrase, working with the body in front of you, we throw it around, but like, I think that that's more dynamic than we appreciate. Um, yes. You know what I mean? So, so like, don't be ashamed in saying that because like we, we throw it around all the time, but the reality is that that's still something you, you should be practicing daily. Um, even when you have your schedule and your, your plan for a person, right? Yeah. And I want to add to that, like, that's so nuanced. That takes a lot of practice. And like, that is like building up a skill as an instructor too. Mm -hmm. Just, um, you know, we learn like the moves in training, the stuff in training that like, I was thinking about this yesterday. Like, it's like a hamburger, right? And like, you want the whole, yeah. you think the whole hamburger when you go to training and like, really you get like the buns <laughs> like, and, then, and, then, and you're like this is the moves this is the this, yeah and then, and then like the meat and all the stuff like or you know yeah patty whatever your thing is right like all the stuff <laughs> like, just like I, my, i'm west indian okay so like uh, my parents are from jamaica so everything has like seasoned with flavor and everything so it'd be like getting a bland piece of chicken you're like there's nothing on this. There's no seasoning on this. It's not cooked. <laughs> like, what's, what's the deal? Like, there's nothing on this. So you've given me the meat. That's great. But it's not flavored yet. No, no. Yeah. And you have to build that up, right? It's like, a, so when people say that term or talk about being a newer instructor or, you know, growing as an instructor, like, that is always a muscle that we're building is, honestly, it's intuition. Like you're, you're like, I was talking with another instructor and I, I said something and she was like, how did you know to say that? And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know, but like, <laughs> <That's right>. it, <laughs> yeah. it worked. I, I just felt it. But mm -hmm. then if I broke it down, I could step back and break it down and be like, Oh, well I saw their heel do this, which made me think that, you know, and it was a whole mm -hmm. thing. But like just into it, like that became that was still curiosity though. That was that was like that was your curiosity. Yeah. That wasn't uh page seventy three in your manual. Like that was like curiosity. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, yes. I love that word. Did you look at my posts? Uh which one? I, I was going through oh, a bunch of your stuff, but which one? All about like the assignment is curiosity, right? And Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Curiosity and um in, in your own movement, like being curious about yourself and your own movement mm -hmm. practice. And then I think that really carries over to being an instructor too. Like, yeah. Oh, I love sure. comments. Stay yeah, curious. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Stay curious. My, love. when I ask people, that's that's still like to this day, that my favorite answer that's some, I think it was Rudy Pilates Boston gave me the answer. I maybe I can't remember who it was. I said, who is your ideal client? I'm like, man, and I gave my whole like, I, you know, ideal person, you just dropped yours a minute ago. 
And this lady said, someone who is curious and courageous. That is so perfect. Yes. How perfect is that? Like, I've, nothing's beat that answer. Like, no. <laughs> not that it's, a, it's not a competition. I'm not judging every answer after that. But when she said that, I was like, mic drop. nailed it. Yeah, that was a mic drop. Legit. Yeah. Absolutely. That's fantastic. I love that. Uh, Kristen's comment here. The real learning begins when training ends. Bob Lakins, who was one of my trainers, said that to my group. And I've passed it, that along to, uh, to apprentices. I, I agree. You know, um, I, there's two, I have two examples of that. One I said earlier this week, my mom said to me, like when I was doing my, my counseling and before that, I'd read every book on how to be a good husband, how to be a good man, how to be a good dad. How to, and she would say, there's certain things that you're only going to learn within the context of being married within the context of being a parent. So you could read every book on the planet and you're still not going to be ready for something that hits you when you're in that context. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that that's it. So as much as I knock a lot of teacher training programs here on the show, I know that there's a lot of things that we don't, that, that we can't learn in those teacher training programs. Yeah. So let's, I want to hold space for that too and say like, you can do the best job forever and then someone's going to walk into your studio the next day who was fine 15 hours ago and then fell off their bike on their way in and now you have to change everything on the spot yes yes and that's not going to be in the manual no so you're going to have to figure that out <laughs> right. so i appreciate that so certain things within context so i'm changing my song because I, I get it like yeah. I, I get that yeah yeah absolutely and it yeah it is just if you view it that way right like as, as the starting point then mm -hmm. that room to grow and the expectation is that you will continue to grow and expand in, in that um yep. i think there's danger when the expectation is that's it right and then right duck. run away at that point. <laughs> yeah just run yeah. uh olivia plotties what's going on my friend so ha absolutely it takes time to learn all those nuances uh to teaching another human so stay curious and, you know, I, I pointed this out when uh, Noam was, was speaking the other day and he was talking and he was saying, and you listen to the person, right? And the way he did this with his hands, it was like, okay, you're a next level teacher because what you're doing, you're saying you're listening with your hands. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. 100%. You know what I mean? So I, and I'm not putting him on a pedestal as much as I was saying. I see things when people do stuff like that. I'm like, okay, I got to level my game up. Okay, there's other ways that I could listen to the body. Okay, I can look for these things. Or I can lean, I can just chill like in your manifesto and be like, I can be technical without making the practice seem, I can't remember what your wording was, but like there's a sense of like <laughs> making it so practical, but not, you know, not so heavy technically that it overwhelms the person. Yes. Absolutely. I love that. Those are, those are uh, skills. I love that. I started doing, I would, and I didn't realize this was a pattern until I had a, a newer instructor come to like get observation hours in with me. And I sit, like I get low and I get down as yeah. fast as I can. Um, we do our, our stuff eye to eye. Like we sit mm -hmm. on the couch eye to eye. I talk to them near the machine eye to eye. As soon as they lay down, I go lower. Like I sit on the mm -hmm. floor. You know, yeah. and I back to the side, and and it's so much more of like they are moving and I am observing than like mm -hmm. me looming over somebody and being like, I will tell you what to do. <laughs> you know? like, oh yeah, for sure. It's so like that's like an active listening thing that I've just like started. That like I don't know, I don't know. I honestly think it started with Zoom because. Mm -hmm. With Zoom sessions, I'm like pretty much, I have people set up so I'm pretty much to their side and I've gotten yeah. just to that angle and then being able to like, well, not being able to touch them and just being like, okay, try that, try that. That looks like, yeah. it's, you know, it could be my angle. Yeah. We'll see, what, see what feels good for you, you know? Well, yeah. Yeah. And That's, so in person, awesome. And, uh, but I remember, I'm saying all to say, I remember in training, sitting down on the reformer, like I was teaching somebody, the reformers were in a line, right? And I was, you know, practice teaching, round robin teaching. And I sat down on the reformer that would have been next to them so I could watch from the side. And also it was a long day, you know, whatever. And I just sat down and she was like, stand up. 
I got a stand up too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm not going to say this story. And then you just said, I'm like, that happened to me too. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> okay. You know, I was like, oh, I did something wrong. I, I guess I shouldn't relax. I shouldn't, like, I should be tense and, they, and I should be over them. And like, it's like, oh, what? Then they're tense because yeah. they're at their pelvis. <laughs> like, it's weird. You know? For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and no, that, so yeah, so that's that. I mean, it's happened to both of us. Anyone else in the chat yeah. that's happened to you? Um, Stand up. <laughs> but I know. When it happened to me, though, I, I have to say that I'm, I was coming up Pilates from the personal training world where I, I was taught train from 360 degrees, right? So, like, you don't just stand there, like, looking down at your clipboard while someone's working. Like, that's, that's, a, like, that's a cheap gift, right? Like, I'm like, you move around, you see things, look at different angles, watch how they articulate. What, so, I was doing that, and the same thing. I'm squatting down or sitting down or trying to see something. It's like, no, stand up. I'm like, okay, I was just trying to get a perspective of. Right. You know, like, oh, how do I do the whole thing? <laughs> but yeah. Very, yeah, that's yeah, it's crazy. It's uh, but I'm I'm excited to see. I see conversations happening where I'm like, okay, like you know, little like things like trauma informed, you know, Pilates. I'm yeah, so Tammy and yeah, okay. people are. But I think it is changing in terms of being aware Girl. of communicating, even if yeah. you information should always be there or whatever, like how we deliver, how we interact with people, like, as we mm -hmm. learn more about people and how communication happens best. I'm so hopeful that it will continue to evolve and, and then add in like empowering instructors to really find their own voice and that that be okay, I think is yes. hopeful. Anyways. Hopeful. No, uh, yeah, I agree. We could, we could talk on that all day because I mean, there's such a foundation that needs to be laid to be able to get to there and to do all that stuff and we both get that. Um, but yes. we're at 1049 and you also talked yesterday about your own body experience with chronic pain and just like walking through that. Can you just talk a little bit about that and just like your lived experience with it that you're bringing to your clients? <laughs> yeah. How much time do you <laughs> I know. Hey? Uh, right. So part three is coming. I guess part two and a half, I guess, will be coming at some point, people, because I just opened a big book, I'm, I'm realizing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, I've said it, like, semi-flippantly, like, I 100% have felt at war with my body. And I know what that mm. um, whether it's the expression of it, how it looks, how it feels, how it feels to me, um, I have felt that. Um, I have had a history with eating disorders. Um, I have ehlers Stanlow Syndrome with connective tissue disorder. Uh, mm. It affects everything. Um, the biggest, like most noticeable thing is hypermobility. So when I would try to do something physical, I would hurt myself. Like I dislocated my femur in the first five minutes of a yoga class at like 14. Um, I dislocated my patella on an elliptical. So these aren't even like I'm trying to be an athlete. Like I'm just trying to move, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's tough. That's yeah. <laughs> like I just want to move and feel good. Like I love going on walks, and I'm like, well, maybe I'll run. And it's like, well, that wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just I always felt at war with myself. Like. I want to try to do this or feel this way or do what other people are doing naturally. But I was also very acutely aware of the pain that it would cause me. Um, and just like painting my toenails. I remember my back completely freezing like in high school and I was just stuck on the floor for like 20 minutes. And I was like, how uh. am I going to get through life? <laughs> like, I can't have toenails. <laughs> like, I just like, oh uh, no. It, um, That's, uh... So it's just like that, but it uh, also affects everything internal too. So like yeah. I, I have POT symptoms, MCAS symptoms, um, hypothyroid, endometriosis, like you name it, I've probably experienced it. And so Pilates was the first thing that I felt my muscles, but I didn't feel my joints. Um, like, yes. and I realized that most people have that feeling when they work out like standardly, you know, um, mm -hmm. and I've never felt that. So that was like, 
ma- like I was like, this is sorcery. Like, what kind of magic is it? You know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was telling my fiance, husband now, um, like I feel my muscles, but like my shoulder didn't pop out. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like, what am I getting into here? <laughs> yeah. um, so I kind of fell into Pilates. Um, I had bought a, this is kind of a longer thing, but um, in college, I was watching So You Think You Can Dance, and there was this girl, and they showed like a three second clip of her on a reformer, but she looked like she was so strong. She could do anything they threw at her. And I was like, that's what I want to be like. So I'm literally yes. a, like, machine with springs for dancers like i have never heard of a reformer in my life Mm -hmm. and um i come across an aero pilates machine and i buy it with my student refund money so like bad financial decisions but um (laughs) i put that in like youtube and then pilates anytime was like just coming out i was feeling my body and not pain and i was like yes so then my mother-in-law got me a membership to, for my birthday to a local studio that had just become a stat studio. Um, I did one month. I fell in love with it. Changed my life. And then mm. I'm poor in college, so I'm out, you know. And the owner yeah. was I think we need to work something out. And so yes. I worked the front desk. I learned the mind-body system. I cleaned the toilet. I dusted the – like, I did everything. I was able to take classes. Um, okay, Gary V. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I learned also the downsides of owning I should have taken more notes on that, but um, yeah, but about all that. And then um, she became an instructor trainer for Stott. So then she let me like make payment plans on my first course. Um, and honestly, mm-hmm. if it was not for this lady, like I would not be doing what I'm doing. Like I couldn't afford my own. It's like, I, I don't know what she saw in me, but that connection was like that changed the next 10 years of my life and also the ability to take care of my body like when my shoulder is out like i know how to care for it when my hip feels weird i know how to care for it when my spine feels like it needs to move but it can't do an intense workout like i'm i know what to do and i'm in like all these groups of like eds stuff and and that is not the case like not everybody has that toolbox to be like oh, this thing is off. Let me just like, I view it like, you know, when you get like a new modem or something and at the back, Mm -hmm. there's like a troubleshooting guide. It's like Pilates is my troubleshooting. (laughs) Yeah. Well, if this, then that. If this, then try these four things. (laughs) (laughs) That's what, that's my elevator pitch. I troubleshoot for people. (laughs) For sure. Exactly. And if those 12 solutions don't work, please consult a professional. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my, um, you know, I've had ups and downs. I have random flare ups and whatever. And my energy levels recently have not been awesome. And um, so I very much relate to people that come in that are like, you know what, I'm not here for an intense hour long thing, but like, I need to take care of myself. And then sometimes they show up and they're like, I'm ready to go. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. But like, let's, let's learn how to work with your body instead of against it. You know, um, and that's, that's been my. So good. Self- myself as much too like I still have to remind myself of that but um but that's kind of what all of this has led me to I guess is learning that Mm -hmm. and if I can share it with people cool wow anyway Chris I I think that little soundbite right there will do more for your business than any marketing strategy you put out again because that is just a, a powerful testimonial to what plies can do for someone else yeah. Just because you've lived it out. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Good insight. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Take that. Use that. Like, yes, honestly, like, I recycle yes. that yes. a million times because that's su- that is so good. That is such a great story. I, and honestly, I like extracting those stories from people because it, people get an insight to the person behind the brand. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You know, because people, people like someone will find you online because they saw the machine on TV right. and they'll stay with you because of that story right there. Yeah. And another thing I, I got to add to that too is you mentioned Aero Pilates. <laughs> and um, I was on the shopping channel. So I've, I've 
I used to push the Aero Pilates stuff and I've met the lady who invented it okay. and all these different things. So um, before pre-COVID, I would be the guy in the background doing the exercises <laughs> and smiling. So I'm You're a fitness proud. model. <laughs> yeah, I work with Tony Little. I did the whole nine. So when these people do these things, people like me, those fitness professionals, watch that on TV and judge it. Yeah, That's yeah. not Pilates. That's just a gimmick. Is that a fake? Is that real? And I'm really careful with what I promote even on TV, right? They give me some like squat chair thing. And I'm like, that's not real. But right. there's other things that are like, you know, shake weights and stuff. I'm like not doing that. But there's certain things that are like, you could see that this person's intent was to get Pilates accessible and affordable and in your house with a video so that you can do it as a first step. Yeah. That couch to movement piece is so important so when you hear that your whole trajectory started with you seeing something in the background and then buying it off of you know the Aero Pilates piece I'm sure like, I'll send this to her like she'll be like, elated because that's her vision yeah like, every one of us has a vision and that same that client avatar and those things so while we're trying to do our thing that was her thing that we would hate on because it's not the main thing of course but she's but you're a living testament to like her vision living out. Yeah, I never could have, you know, in my like little apartment in college, I never could have afforded a stop Pilates V2 Max, right? I still barely can't, like, <laughs> can't afford it now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. like, you know, um, like that, you're so right about like the judging as part of that. And I, I even being having started there, I am 100% guilty of that. And yeah, I, for sure. My mind has flipped on that so many times. But like, even recently, and I won't, we won't get into this too much, but like club Pilates, love them or hate them, like, they make movement accessible to people. And that's phenomenal. Like, they run a great business, like a lot of business, like studio owners do not and they kill it. Like they have a mm -hmm consistent message they have a consistent thing they do they like you know like they offer something to the community that is accessible yeah. and, and often it leads people to businesses like art, right where they're like right. something different I, like that's that can be their start well, too, you know for sure awesome. yeah i think it's it's I yeah, we're all part of the same Pilates journey, and we're or that trajectory. So people are going to meet us along the way somewhere in that. So um, that's good. That's so good. Yeah. It's eleven o'clock. Oh, I legit. I have a client. I have to. I know I have to jump off for, <laughs> yeah. and I have so many questions because I didn't even get into like scalability of your business <laughs> and like just so many things I had written down that I want to hit. So um, yeah. we have to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Friday's off. <laughs> Nice. We actually didn't even talk about the Fridays. That's the whole thing. That, that, it's all right, so, Friday's off. All right, people. So this might be next Friday's conversation, part two. Um, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. So, super fun. Having me. Friday I will not. Yes. Everybody, goodbye this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's, you can't. You can't take away the first one. It's. It's already happened. We've, we've had the moment. It's. It's. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you to everyone else who joined.